Good evening and welcome to our tonight's webinar. And uh, this is another live event uh, to today and this week, actually. And as you know, we have plenty more coming. And with us tonight, we have another special guest. Uh, this this time, it's, it's Dr. Uliana. Just let me know that you can hear me, Dr. Uliana. Yes, I can hear you, Caroline. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome to our webinar. This is not your first webinar with us. So I'm happy that you are back with us and uh, you will be able to, to present a very interesting topic for sure. Uh, but before that, let me remind everyone that uh, all those events, Stronger Together events that we are having every single day from Monday till Friday, uh, they have been brought to you so that you can uh, get some knowledge, just find out a bit on all aspects when it comes to IVF. As we know right now, most of you are not able to still uh, start your treatments. We just are here to support you however we can. And uh, those events has been brought to you also thanks to our ambassadors and partners. You can see them right here on the screen. There are plenty of them. So I'm not going to name all of those, but I'm sure some of them you already actually know as they already had been uh, our presenters. Thanks so much. And uh, well, now, as I mentioned, it is time to start uh, with the presentation. Uh, so Dr. Uliana will start with the presentation on should the patient always travel for IVF treatment? Options for biological materials transportation. Definitely interesting topic. I'm sure there will be plenty of um, useful information for you. Please let us know that you can hear us. And uh, well, that is it from me right now. Uh, after the presentation, it will be time for your questions. So don't hesitate to ask anything that you have in mind. As I know, Dr. Oliana will be happy to answer your questions. And of course, that way you can uh, get some advice as well. That is it from me, Dr. Oliana. How are you and are you ready to start? Thanks, Caroline. I am fine and I'm happy to join again. Uh, as you have mentioned, we are really in the good relationships with the egg donation friends, with the IVF media. And I'm really thankful for this unique and very important initiative of Stronger Together. Uh, that we can use that time that's very different time and we would never expect this to happen to change our plans, to change our lives, to change our work and to change the expectations uh, of our patients. And that's why I decided to deliver that uh, this presentation and to discuss with you uh, to, to bring some more information about uh, issue of uh, what is possible for those patients who are not able to travel abroad right now and should really always patients travel for IVF treatment for some reasons probably yes but for some no and we will discuss this and also we will touch the the um, topic which is not really so much discussable between the even professionals and definitely not with patients. These are the options of the biological material transportation. Uh, I'm Dr. Ulyana Dorofeva. I'm the medical director of the MediCover clinics in Ukraine and the medical advisor for the First Tech Bank. Uh, so let's start. Um, now, like last months, definitely all we have seen the map of the world differently because we were checking what is going on in the different countries, what are the numbers of the COVID positive patients, what are the um, situations there. And for patients, uh, definitely they were watching what is going on in the country. I was deciding to go and I postponed or where my biological materials are stored, how are there, how it is safe, etc. And this is true that the millions of human oocytes, sperm and embryos are stored in the thousands of locations around the world and this stock is continuing to grow as the cryopreservation becomes to be more successful and absolutely widely used 
And we came from the practice that uh, the freezing was the backup technology. And um, in general, IVF uh, is not so long lasting experience in the IVF, like it's about more than 40 years. But if we are talking about the effective um, uh, sewing or warming uh, or freezing and warming, this is vitrification, which is, uh, we are practicing this a little bit more than 10 years. And this brought us to the uh, survival rate around 95%, meaning that almost all the materials we can, we will freeze or we are freezing, we can use further. And if we are talking about the needs of the patients to travel, these are the facts related to the medical tourism. And as I said, that we never expected this to happen in terms of the, um, uh, like the epidemic right now. And before that, we saw the medical tourism facts as the 25% grows every year, like a market with 4 million over uh, 4 million uh, euro market, 11 million medical tourists were traveling for different needs to the different countries, which is about three to 4% of the whole population. Why they were traveling, uh, this is the, uh, the possibility to get reduced costs for the cross-border medical treatment. And this is also true for reproductive tourism. Patients are looking for the higher quality care and services, which sometimes are not available in their home country. Sometimes patients would like to combine the medical treatment with the attractive destinations. And the most important pro probably for the IVF, this is the fact that Patients were looking for the treatments, methods, or medications, or the offers which are not approved or available in their home country. Uh, this is the information from the egg donation friends, from uh, our partners, and one, the costs is one of the reasons why the patients decided to travel, but we need to understand that um, also, we have related factors to that cost that you also need to arrange the flights, the accommodation, this is another country, not always speaking your home language, uh, you need to, to make a lot of a lot of arrangements. Um, and if we are talking about which countries, like patients from which countries are going there, so we can see UK, Ireland, Australia, Germany, and Switzerland, and Belgium, Norway, etc., on the first list of those countries. Many of them, uh, and big amount of these tourists in, in reproduction, these are tourists who are looking for the legal options of the treatments, which are not possible in their home country. If we are talking about the patient's rights, so all patients and all of us, we have a right to receive the healthcare services we require. We have a free choice of doctor and the medical institution, meaning we can select any doctor and any clinic anywhere in the world. Uh, and if we are talking about reproduction, embryos uh, and gametes are patient's property and the clinic or medical institution is only providing the services. They can uh, create those materials, they can store, they can do different manipulations, but definitely the property, like who owns the materials is the patient. And if there is a need or if there is a will of the patient, these materials can be transported into another clinic, either inside of the country or even outside or even very, very far away from the home country. Surrogacy, there is one of the medical uh, needs for the reproduction uh, when the, the materials are transported. Because quite often the materials, the embryos or the sperm, for example, is stored in one in the home country. And due to the fact that the legislation is different in, in many countries all around the, the globe, and only few countries can provide legal surrogacy, that's why this is very common. Uh, reason why to travel and probably for surrogacy many patients need to travel. We can reduce the numbers of those uh, flights if we can travel the materials and this is definitely the option uh, but anyhow patients uh, would not avoid traveling in general. If we are talking about egg donation uh, in many many countries this option is uh, available and it's legal 
The, op the another option why patients are not using the services in the home country is the number of the available donors or donor materials in this country because the donation itself is not regulated or it's only altruistic or there is any other factors which impact the amount of materials which are available in this home country. And that's why if patients want to get the service and they want to get the um, variety of the donor oocytes and they don't want to wait, they decide to travel. But this issue can be solvable by bringing the materials to that country if this is legal there. And we will talk also about this. So which materials are stored at the IVF clinics? Mostly these are surplus embryos from the previous treatment cycle. This is preserved sperm from the patients for further fertilization or for example, for the cancer patients. These are donor gametes. Uh, they are stored in the clinics or in the, in the egg banks um, and the patient's own materials. Very often this is for social vitrification or for th those who are dealing with the oncological treatment for the further uh, IVF treatment. We need to mention that the cryo storage duration does not affect pregnancy and neonatal outcomes. And there is a lot of um, uh, trials and already papers being published and this is already confirmed that it's uh, independently of how long your materials have been stored, they are absolutely as well affected as they were before. It more relies to the quality of those materials as they were on the time of the vitrification and the storage itself, if everything is done properly, has any impact on reducing the quality of those. There is another issue why the patients are requesting the um, transportation of the biological materials because some countries are limiting the, uh, the cryo storage duration. For example, in Denmark, Denmark, it's still five years. And the fact is that if patient is, is, has created the embryos today and during the five years further, she just didn't decide to, to create the family, but she don't want to, she has al already that materials. She can move those materials to another country and then use the, the IVF services there. Australia in different states, uh, they have limits between five to 15 years. UK has been changed just recently from 10 to 55 years. And for example, like many countries, they really don't have those limits, but some have. So that's why this is the reason to transport. So the reasons in general, if we are talking about patients needs, so this is a selection of the donor or the clinic. It's a reproductive tourism for the fact of the legality or reducing the costs um, or the limit of the cryo storage time. If we are talking about the clinic's needs, so these are transportation between clinics, either in one group or under the cooperation agreements. We are doing like in our uh, clinic, we have a department of the medical couriers and the um, IVF clinics or different medical centers, embryology laboratories or the egg banks and also individual patients are using those services. Um, the transportation is not exposed to the X-ray because uh, we know that the, the X-ray can uh, cause the genetic problems in the biological material. So that's why we do everything and uh, all the transportation is uh, supervised by the medical courier. So that never materials is uh, transported as the, um, as the cargo. This is not our practice and we would like to avoid this in all cases which possible. We do all the transportations with the temperature sensitive control. So we can definitely be sure that during the period of the transportation, there was no negative impact into the quality of the biological materials. In, we do this in the compliance with all the standards. Uh, we, but using on the latest approved dry shippers, we have a support and you can have the communication with the medical couriers all the time. Uh, and this is, is done by the team of the professionals. What is needed to be done in order to prepare the shipment itself? First, patients need to provide information about uh, the medical facilities, both. The one which would be sending the materials and the another one 
which would is going to receive the materials. Also, we need to get the, the results of the patient's uh, analysis, like the HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B and C, as we are taking the responsibility and we are using like also, if the patient is having the, the disease, the transportation of the materials is possible, but we will be using the separate containers and we would never mix those materials with the, any other materials. But in, and also it needs to be known by the receiving laboratory that these samples are infected, so there is a special protocol related to, to them. Uh, after uh, we are getting this information, we need to fill in the specific form, which is called the transfer act. This is more medical form and is filled by the embryologist mostly or the responsible person from the clinic, which is sending the biological materials and the information regarding the quantity, the quality, the media, the straw number, the carrier information uh, is uh, there. And this is also very important to know to the receiving centers as even mixing the media or the protocols for the sewing can implement and can impact the, the survival rates and the sewing results. So we are also taking care together with the patient and with the receiving clinic that all uh, who are related to this process knows all the information they need to, to know. Um, also, the patient needs to get uh, informed with the and to sign all the consents and to get informed with the contract and agrees on all points and the conditions um, and consult with the staff of the accepting clinic to prepare the acceptance letter, which will help for the um, uh, couriers to communicate with all on the way, like the airport security, the custom brokers, if needed in some countries and uh, all the others. Sometimes the federal police, like this was um, sometimes happening because these are specific materials. Uh, which uh, regulations are for the transportation? So in the International Air Transport Association, there are rules describing the conditions for the biological material transportation and the, also in the International Civil Aviation Organization. Um, the containers, these are certified containers, the dry shippers, uh, there are different uh, volumes of those depending on the volume of the materials which is going to be transported. Either the individual, like the small ones, uh, usually we are using this for one or several patients, or bigger ones for the needs of the transporting by the clinic. Um, and those containers, they are keeping the stable temperature for eight days, this one, the smaller one, and for 14 days but we never are using uh, such a long time for the transportation. Usually it's happening much faster. In average, this is two to three days, depending on the location. Also, the transportations need to be done, done with the control of the temperature and the conditions inside the door. You know that the storage temperature of the biological materials is minus 196. And the, the, the temperature, which is over 180, this is already a risk zona for the biological materials to be pre-warm and to have a risk of losing the, the quality. So that's why we are using the loggers, which are showing the, the graphs for all the time during the materials are in the container. And you can see that graph from March and we are checking the containers after each transportation and regularly every six months. And this is the graph of, of the absolutely um, stable uh, control every six months, meaning the container was inside the laboratory. And once it was inside the laboratory and locked, we saw the temperature minus 200. And when we opened the container, the temperature went up to plus 20 almost and during the packing or repacking of the container it was uh, up and then after we closed the container the temperature went down and it, it was stable all the, all the time and this is uh, the reading for the three days done 
This is the reading of the uh, transportation itself. This was the transportation and also the reading for the three days in March 2020. You can see the increase here. This increase is connected to the flight. So once the container was uh, in the cabin of the plane and the, the pressure has been changed, we can see that there is an um, increase. But what is the most important that we need to see the deviation? Like we, the most important not to see that the um, temperature was over minus 180. And in this graph, we have the temperature between 191 to 197, meaning this is absolutely a stable conditions for the biological materials. But definitely if the doers is moving, if the, if the physical characteristics outside are changing, we uh, will see some changes inside the doer. But this is very important to be controlled. And this is another graphs of the on-road transportation by car. You also, you cannot see the, the increase or absolute decrease, but uh, the doer was moving and the temperature was moving. And in this graph, it's between 195 to 196. And also the measurements are done uh, between like uh, for three days. That's why this is very important to know and very important to control and be sure about the um, conditions. If we are talking about Ukraine, uh, we because I will be we are discussing why the patients need to travel and when they cannot travel or should not travel or can avoid this traveling. So during last year, before this uh, very hard times of the the COVID epidemic, we received patients from 26 clinics. Mainly patients were coming for the uh, egg donation or surrogacy treatments, but also for the regular IVF. Many of them were for the uh, multiple attempt already, not receiving the pregnancy um, in their home destinations, and th that's why they decided to change the location. Um, we do immunological treatment, we do individualized embryo transfer, we do some experimental methods as the ovarian rejuvenation. So that's why people are deciding to, to visit Ukraine for, for these needs. Um, and of course, we have excellent uh, success rates and we can offer um, very great egg donation programs and legal surrogacy, this all can be done in Ukraine. But our practice for several last years, I would say for eight years already, is also to ship the, the export, the biological materials being provided in Ukraine, mainly these are donor oocytes, don uh, or the embryos created with the donor oocytes after the sperm was shipped to our destination. So then the blastocysts are shipped back to the home countries, to the clinics, which can provide the embryo transfer to the patient. Mean, and so far, it's already 53 clinics in all locations. Of course, if we are talking about egg donation, these are all locations where egg donation is possible and legal. But clinics are offering this option for the patients to keep them home, to avoid their traveling, to keep them in unstressful situation. Um, so they can be in almost regular life uh, and not uh, take care about like different arrangements, but get the treatments in their home countries. What we are offering, uh, as I said, these are frozen donor eggs, uh, sperm samples, possibility of the embryo creation, and of course, like to be sure about the whole process and to take final care of the final results, this is also the cryo-shipping of the samples. We have extended egg donor uh, catalog and you can select out of 450 egg donors. And so far we have over 6,000 donor oocytes being stored in our facility and they are ready to be shipped. 
We have more than 200 sperm donors available in the database and their biological materials. There is a possibility to create embryos, as I already said. Donation can be identifiable or anonymous. And our bank is working according to the standards of the EU tissue directives and the IGPA compliant. We also have FDA eligible uh, oocyte in our database. Uh, this is how the online database is looking. So it's very easy to select. And in order to start working, you can just register it on our website and you will get a free day, seven days free access to the donor catalog. Then you are choosing your donors online and order the uh, courier service. And as soon as this is possible, like so far, it is possible by on-road transportation. This is not our regular way of doing the transportations. Usually we are flying and the materials are flying together with the um, uh, with our medical courier, so they are supervised. We are never sending cargo, as I said. Sometimes we can do this for the sperm samples, but uh, definitely we avoid to do this for the oocytes and embryos, as the conditions need to be controlled. And the, the cost, it's not even the cost, like those materials are unique and very often, we will not have another chance to create a new embryos for our patients. Mm, so this is the, the methods, uh, but the most reliable and the most effective and the fastest is, of course, the air transportation. As I said, nowadays, in the time of the COVID uh, pandemia, we are getting to Europe, all around the Europe, but uh, so far that's it, and we are See, looking for the options of opening the, the borders and renewing the, the flights. Uh, there are not so many publications related to how um, transportation affects the survival rate and what would be the conditions for these materials and what would be the expected um, success results after the transportation. I could find only one paper um, relatively old from 2016 and the authors they are authors from Italy and Spain they were checking the three ways of the transportation plane as a hold baggage plane as a cabin baggage and the road courier and their results of all side survival were 60 percent 65 percent and weight 89 and the highest was after the materials were transported by road. They also divided the survival rate depending on the donor age, and there was no significant difference between young donors between 20 to 25, 26 to 30, 31 to 35. Uh, but there was a difference also from the um, banks. You can see there was one bank in Spain, second bank in Spain, and the, the third one in Italy. Um, and the difference was uh, quite significant between 64 to 81. So probably these were not the um, influences of the transportation itself, but maybe the way how the, um, the egg bank is working and selecting the materials and in general has their efficiency. This is just some example of the clinics which uh, for last period, which brought their data to us. And this is 19 clinics who received vitrified oocytes and these are their data regarding the survival rate. You can see the clinics are different and these are the materials from one clinic supplier. Sometimes it's even happening that these are the materials from one donor being divided into two sets in that clinic and in this clinic. So you can see that many factors can play the role uh, in the survival rate and many clinics have, and our cutoff, the, ex the expectation is to have the survival rate over 80%. And of course the blastulation high, the clinical pregnancies, but some clinics are getting 100% and some clinics are getting 20. We will uh, also talk about what can influence those mm, results. And these are more wider data. You can see the total number of the oocytes, for example, here being born, the over 3000 oocytes in that clinic. Uh, and if we are talking about this example, so the survival rate, 
was 87%, fertilization rate 89%, cleavage 83%, utilization rate, meaning all embryos which we got and which could be either transferred or cryopreserved was 49% and the clinical pregnancy rate 60%. But there was another clinic with 92 survival and finally 33 clinical pregnancy rates. So it's really depending from center to center, from embryologist, clinician, etc. Uh, but not only related to the transportation, if the conditions are controlled um, or the um, the the egg donor facility, for example. And these are also the examples from our materials on the embryo creation program. So for these clinics, we received the sperm in our facility, then performed the stimulation for donors, um, creating the embryos, freezing the blastocyst or the three embryos, depending on the clinic, and send them back. And you can see that the survival rate, it also was a little bit different between 91% to 96 but this is absolutely acceptable survival. They were transferring in average 1.1 to 1.5 embryos. This is not European centers, so their results were a little bit like lower than expected, but the cumulative clinical pregnancy rate, meaning that clinical pregnancy rate after they transferred all the embryos from the initial cycle, and initial cycle in these uh, um, clinics, this was eight oocytes, was uh, between 76% to 86%. So these are also great data. And this was the initial numbers. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. So the initial number of the oocytes was 9.7, 9.4, 9.4, 11.7. So these are cumulative out of this. And this is the total number of the cycles being performed in this um, cooperation. These are also our volumes. I told you that we are shipping to 53 clinics and during the time of three years, we ship 12,577 oocytes. And for all the locations, uh, we have average survival rate 82%. Uh, fertilization average as well, 76%, utilization rate 51%. Um, but the clinical data varies, as I said, from clinic to clinic. In terms to the patient, why uh, there is an advantage of using vitrified donor oocytes um, in comparison, for example, to fresh donation. Uh, if we are using vitrified donor oocytes, the, the materials, um, the donor, donor oocytes can be selected in the first visit once you just visited the clinic. And then as soon as your cycle has started, there would be the planning of your uh, endometrial preparation. You can start estrogens and you can prepare your endometrium as long as needed, meaning there is no synchronization, there is no rush that you need to um, be uh, synchronized with the egg donor. And uh, sometimes it's happened before then the gold standard was the fresh donor stimulation that the endometrium is only six uh, millimeters, but the donor follicles are already ready to triggering. So we were in need to push somewhere or to go into the some uh, decisions like what to do in order to, to keep the synchronization and successful cycle. So meaning here, only after the endometrium is prepared and the patient starts progesterone, we uh, warm donor oocytes, we perform fertilization, the, then the embryos are are cultivated and the embryo transfer is done. And usually if there is a need and the clinic has enough uh, materials, this can happen within one or one and a half uh, months from the first visit of the patient until the embryo transfer is done. So what are the points which can influence the results? Of course, first and very important for the uh, sowing uh, result and the statistics, these are embryological efficiency. 
also the qualification of the embryologist, um, the, the training they have been performed, the number of the cases they did before, also the clinical efficiency, like how good is the doctor in the endometrial preparation, in planning the cycle, um, etc. Uh, working environment conditions for the vitrification and warming they are really crucial meaning what is the temperature in the laboratory what is the humidity how often the air is changed in the lab so this should be a good laboratories for working with the vitrification and warming also the use of the consumables and media uh, the optimal is that if, for example, we are using Kitazato as the media and the technique for the vitrification, the same protocol should be followed by the clinic who is doing the warming. Uh, the traceability of the biological materials, appropriate conditions for the storage, uh, and of course the transportation, as we have mentioned already before. The global data is also saying that we should expect pregnancy uh, between 4.5% to 12 per 1 sold oocytes. Why there is a difference in three, almost three times? Because it also depends on the conditions of the uterus, um, of the patient age, of the, uh, for example, is she having the endometriosis or not? But this is the data and the minimum uh, expected is 4.5. Uh, and also what can play the role on the um, uh, final result, this is the initial number of the materials which were dedicated for the treatment cycle. Uh, this is the data from one clinic and they compared, uh, also we provided of course the biological materials and they compared their results on the eight oocytes uh, sets and the 12 oocytes sets. The, the numbers are relatively low, but they are quite, um, we can see the difference. So for the cycles with 12 oocytes, all the patients got embryo transfer. In those who used only eight oocytes, only 86% of the patients got embryo transfer. In some cases, they didn't get the high quality embryos for the transfer. And potentially this was the factor of the sperm quality uh, here. Uh, the clinical pregnancy rate per transfer, um, and they were transferring only one, here is strictly one embryo for transfer, was between 42 for 8 oocyte sets to, to 15, 12 oocyte sets. Um, and the cumulative, like for the single completed egg donation cycle, it was 78 for 12 oocyte sets and only 50 for eight oocytes, meaning definitely more materials we have in the beginning, uh, like we should expect higher number of uh, higher uh, clinical pregnancy rates and the results. If we would conclude, so the gametes are patient's property. I would like to remind this to you and that you may decide what needs to be done further with them and where you can receive your treatment. Reproductive tourism is facing some difficulties right now and may change the conditions or need to change the conditions. The effective implementation of the oocyte vitrification has made uh, possible to discover new therapeutic opportunities in reproduction, like the vitrification, like um, oocyte cryopreservation and the different new techniques. The use of vitrified oocytes can now be considered as the gold standard instead of the fresh donation in reproduction. Transportation of biological materials is possible but should be done in a very proper way. Individual approach to each patient or the treatment cycle allows us to um, get the higher efficiency we can. And once the critical clinical embryological and the organizational aspects are considered, the results um, if the, we travel the biological materials instead of traveling the patients are absolutely the same. Uh, I would like to thank you. You can uh, see the contacts of my colleagues. Like if you are interested to come to Ukraine to receive the treatment, any kind of treatment, you can contact Elena. 
for the first bank communication, like if you would like to get all sites ordered or you would like to get information of where would be the closest to your clinic you can receive treatment and then you can avoid traveling to Ukraine, you can also get this information. And if you need to transport yourself service samples, you can contact our courier service uh, people um, and we will be happy to help you in any way. Uh, I would like to wish you to get back to the uh, regular conditions. It's also probably to us because we we are not uh, like these volumes of the activities are not regular for us and we would like to see more and more patients. But now we are doing more and more shipments, but also we know that we are helping to different patients to different in different locations in this way as well. Um, and I would like to, to say that um, uh, like we should stay in the good health and the good uh, mood and everything should be fine really soon. Thank you so much. And then now I'm ready to answer your questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Uliana, for a very interesting, very informative uh, presentation. Lots of details, useful details. And well, it is definitely time for our questions from our patients. And there are plenty of those actually already. Some of them are quite long, but we can manage, right? Sure. I will Perfect. try to. I just <laughs> to see, I will see the questions on the screen, right? Yes, right okay. here. Perfect. Okay, so let, I will let read me... it out for you. Okay. okay. Sure. So I have embryos already frozen in Spain. I am 48, nearly 49. So time is an issue. I live in the UK. We have been told we need to do new serology tests as now out of date, but my husband can't travel. What are limitations to transfer the embryo to UK? Legalities, anonymous donor. What is risk of damage to embryo in transfer? Is there UK clinics that can do the transfer embryos are at ivf barcelona but now two week quarantine both ways would be impossible donor egg we use spain due to cost in uk we have to pay another year storage in spain in october thank you for yeah. that question thank you for this question this is really the stories we are facing many these days and this is a complicated story because like definitely this is one of those patients who were almost ready for the transfer, having the embryos somewhere in the location far from them. And then they were just stopped uh, for indefinite period. And now we need to think what is uh, what can be done in order to proceed with the so uh, wanted pregnancy. Um, definitely, I would say that the pr priority is to use those uh, embryos and not to go to create the new ones. Uh, as I know, regarding the UK, because we are also having our partner clinics there, 20 out of 60 something clinics already received their licenses to um, restart the IVF treatment. Um, uh, but regarding the the license to receive the materials, I, I don't know really yet. We need to talk to our courier department I, and I think they will be happy to help. Uh, regarding if this is possible right now to move the materials from Spain to UK, yes, it is possible. It would be road transportation. It will take some time and definitely we would prepare, prefer to fly if this would be possible, but so far it's not yet true. Um, but for example, next week our couriers are going to Sweden. Uh, so it's um, not all of also very um, close to us and this is a complicated trip, but, uh, but this will be done because this needs to be done. Um, um, what else I can say here? Uh, what are the limitations to transfer the embryos to UK? Like because the IGFEA is the regular regulatory uh, body there, Clinics need to receive, uh, as I said, all the documents regarding the list, uh, but also the confirmation from the clinic. You need to contact clinic first in the UK, and they will be able definitely to provide you all the instructions. 
Unfortunately, I cannot tell you all details regarding UK. I can tell you everything about Ukraine, but uh, it's definitely possible to get into the communication with the clinics, and I'm happy. I, I am sure that they will be happy to answer. Um, you can regarding the age. Um, I know that the like different countries definitely have different age limits. If I'm not mistaken, for the UK, it's 50 years old, but this also needs to be double checked. For Ukraine, there is no age limit, but in our clinic, we have an ethical committee and we regulated the upper age for the embryo transfer of 54 years old. And this is the upper uh, possible by the regulated uh, authorities in the different locations in the world. Uh, but some clinics in Ukraine can even transfer for the patients over 54. I hope I answered the question and this was useful, but you can also contact us by email. And I think that our staff will be probably able to tell you more in the this question. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much for that question and for your advice, of course. And actually, there is a follow-up, okay? So if you could take a look from the very same patient, UK does not allow anonymous donor. Can an embryo be sent here? That was anonymous. Yes, that's true. I didn't uh, like stop on, on this issue in, in the, my previous answer. Uh, yes, all donations should be uh, non-anonymous, like identifiable for the UK. Uh, in this case, probably the patient needs to consider another country where the anonymous donation can be performed. Or maybe Spain also is renovating, like I, I really is, are not because we are not shipping to Spain and we have not really close contacts, but we, we can get this information as well if needed, uh, if the Spanish clinic can do the transfer. Probably this could be also an option. All right, perfect. Thank you so much again for that. Um, okay. Just checking. Uh, someone has added that UK clinics cannot accept embryos created with donor X from Spain. Just, I can see that here. Well, I can see it's cost, Costa's comment. Yes. Uh, thank you, Costa. Yes, probably it's due to the fact of the identification of the donors and uh, not performing the embryos in accordance to the IGFA standards. That's why probably UK would not be the option for this patient. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much again for clarifying that. Uh, okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's have a look at the next question. It is a bit longer than this one. Okay. <laughs> but I hope Fine. we can take it uh, in parts. My husband and I have three frozen sperm samples, but only the most recent one in the US in 2018 has had the infectious disease test. Our problem is the sample we want to use, which is best quality out of other uh, samples, uh, was slow frozen assisted in 2007 in Australia. He, he did not have any infectious disease test within two, three months, as I think the Ukraine requires, I've been told. I was going to be the recipient of the embryos and told it was not the protocol that the clinic follows, as I've had multiple miscarriages, so now being advised to use a surrogate, which we will do. So the closest infectious tests were done six, seven months beforehand, which proved um, he or I have not had an infectious disease test. We can provide all blood tests since then and even before then. We don't want a fresh sample as he's older now and possible risk of children being born with autism, dwarfism, etc. Can you accept this frozen semen? Can you do an infectious disease test on frozen sperm to prove it is clear of any disease? Great question. Thank you so much. Uh, firstly, I should say that if the surrogacy is the option here, and this is, let's say, the, the last chance, and quite often we are facing those patients who are having and they are using their last chances and we are ready to cooperate with those patients and do our best in order to make this chance successful. I would recommend to bring all three samples uh, into the facility, but firstly, we need definitely to understand what can be done in terms of the infections. If there was the infection check done 
uh, now this is true, like uh, due to the new legislation, which is in force right now, all infection diseases should be checked within last three months um, once the patient is creating the biological materials and uh, we are receiving this. But if the materials were frozen in 2007, the legislation also was different for us and this was six months. Um, also, there is a possibility to redo the testing um, for the patients, even right now, like to get the, the blood samples. The testing cannot be done from the sperm, but we can do the blood testing and by the specific uh, factors, the immunoglobulins, etc., we could prove but also having the results of six months time prior to that freezing in 2007, that patient never had the, the diseases like the HIV or syphilis or hepatitis B and C. So by these conditions, we will be able to receive those materials and considering the, these as non-infected materials. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much uh, for uh, explaining this and of course for your question okay i'm um, just checking if there is uh, there is a follow-up question okay so let mm -hmm. me show you from the very same patient the three samples are in different countries so would prove very costly we've already done 10 ivf so it would be more cost mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately sometimes it's happening but why uh like how what is the quality of those uh, of this sperm sample which is uh, the lastly frozen because if, if in this story this is the sample which is uh, the easiest to be used to be shipped and to be used like how bad it is or maybe if we are talking about like we, we need to see the sperm uh, count and the sperm quality results because if we are talking about ICSI and ICSI is the regular method we are doing fertilization right now and we also have uh, some advanced techniques of the sperm selection uh, maybe this sperm sample is not too bad for this all right and uh, there's a follow-up again so let me just uh, show you straight away but we all have all we have all rep reports the best quality is the 2007 dr john evanson who invented the dna fragmentation only used this one Okay, I cannot comment as I don't know all the information in this case. Probably you um, you can prove or you 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 can trust the recommendations of a doctor, but it's uh, sometimes it's good to get uh, like a second opinion and just to show the results uh, of the sperm samples. Maybe yes. Yeah. Yes, maybe this is really the fact and then we would need to work only with, for these specific samples being stored in 2007 and then we would need to, to do the red testing and checking the conditions of the, the patients and the tests which were done six months prior to the freezing in 2007. All right, perfect. Thank you again for that. And let's have a look at the next question, although let me... Okay, I will show you because it's uh, the same from the patient. So, yes, of course, I would love your opinion. I've had many, many options from different sources. So, I guess it's best if you uh, could just get in touch with Dr. Yeah. Diana, her Thanks, team. Right? Angela. Yes, I will be happy to receive your email. And we, of course, we would, in order to suggest something best, uh, we need to know the whole story. And then we would think what to do next. Perfect. Of course, thank you so much. And now let's move on to the next question that we have. Uh, okay, so do you have an age limit for intended parents at your clinic? We will use a donor. Do you have a guarantee life birth package? It's about surrogacy, I believe, of course, as well. Uh, independently of the method of the IVF, the maximum age by the ethical committee decision is 54. Sometimes we can consider patients for accepting her into the IVF, but it's very rare cases up to uh, 56, but only after the medical concilium decision uh, is made. Um, I don't know what is your age, so that's why I cannot comment here as well. Uh, do you have the guarantee live birth package for surrogacy? Yes, we do. 
All right, perfect. Thank you so much once again for that. Okay, sorry, I'm just checking the question um, right here. As I cannot, uh, sorry, just give me a second because someone said it was omitted. I'm just trying to check it. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> just want to make sure. But here's the question Can the errors be shipped as known or anonymous donor material? Some countries will only accept known embryos, like Australia, and in Cyprus, only unknown or anonymous. Yes, this is the question is very similar to what have been asked before about Spain and the UK. Unfortunately, yes, some countries are having very strict rules, even if the egg donation is allowed, but there is specific egg donation. For example, in the UK, it's only uh, identifiable, like non-anonymous, and many countries are still providing only anonymous donation. And unfortunately, if this is anonymous donation, this cannot be shipped to the countries which are using identifiable donations. Clinic would not receive those materials. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And there is a, there are two questions from a very same patient. So do you have a partner clinic in Canada? And do you know if Canada accepts anonymous donor egg created embryo? Yes, we have uh, several clinics, uh, partner clinics in Canada, and uh, they have been changing, they, they have changed their law in the reproduction, and it also concerned the egg donation in April 2020. Um, um, or like, the date could be changed, but now all the donors should be checked according to the FDA uh, requirements, or they are very similar as in the FDA, and the donors are identifiable there. All, all right, perfect, thank you once again. And the uh, next question. I would like to clarify to Karen, I see she's commenting, uh, Ukraine can accept uh, both anonymous and non-anonymous donation. Uh, I thought you, you was, um, wondering about uh, sending somewhere to the countries which uh, which are having anonymous like uh, identifiable donation but in ukraine both are possible and we can work with uh, both kinds of materials either identifiable or anonymous perfect excellent thank you so much for clarifying that Okay, and the uh, next question is, I have one high quality embryo in Czech Republic and the doctor stated that it would thaw and still be very good. Do you still expect this to be the case in case to, to this to be transferred from there to your clinic? Um, yes, uh, taking into account that our survival rate is also like it varies between 93 to 96 during last several years for vitrification. But we need to know what is the method of the vitrification of your blastocyst if he, and is this a blastocyst or this is a day two or day three embryo for example uh, for the blastocyst yes the survival rate is really good but also what i have commented during my presentation that survival rate like the quality of the biological materials which were before freezing they also uh, can influence these, the survival rate results, meaning if this was um, not a strong embryo in the time of the vitrification, the probability of this embryo to survive well is, would be really lower. So we would like to get the information regarding the embryo cultivation report and check the, the quality of the embryo on the time, oh yes, Thank you. So if this was day five blastocyst AA grade, so it should survive. And if it was stored in the great condition and we will take the responsibility for the transportation and this would be transported with uh, all the rules being followed, this would survive 100, like 95%. Per all right, excellent. Thank you so much. And actually um, there is a, uh follow-up question i had one c grade embryo but the doctor did not allow me to freeze it well strongly suggested that i did not 
uh, actually also in our practice and in our clinic we are not freezing bc or cc graded embryos and this is just um, because the probability of those embryos to survive sowing is very very low and also we are even not transferring them because also the probability for the implantation is very low so i would rather agree with those suggestions of your doctor okay thank you once again for that okay and uh, next question sorry i just need to make sure this is the question in germany the law does not allow women to donate their eggs one of your slides has shown that you ship biological material material to germany do you ship only sperm or also eggs right in germany egg donation is not allowed and uh, if the germany was on that slide uh, probably we ship embryos either from Germany or sometimes this can happen that to Germany, but these were embryos of the patients like using own eggs, not the donor eggs. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. And uh, okay, sorry, there is uh, another question from Dorothy. Okay, you have uh, answered her question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me, because to this day, I have been wondering if that was a third good embryo that could be used in addition to the second double AA grade ones. Just a follow-up. Now, if this is regarding this CC embryo, there is even the scientific evidence already that it's not recommended to transfer good quality embryos and just in pair to, the, to this embryo to put another embryo which is of the low quality because um, what, and the explanation of this study is that uh, the conditions inside the uterus and the reaction of the endometrium for the good embryo is appropriate but if the endometrium is receiving a bad quality embryo the reaction is absolutely different and then the implantation potential could be decreased if we are putting another embryo just in pair and this is a low quality embryo so this would reduce the the it's better to transfer one good quality instead of transferring two uh, just for pair because of the reaction of the endometrium to those second bad quality embryo excellent thank you again for answering this additional question and uh, if we could go back to this patient when it comes to shipping donor material right so uh karen has right. added him referring referring to embryos you create being shipped to australia okay if this is a case that we would need to create embryos from fresh then vitrify them and then to ship them to australia uh, yes, we can do so, but in um, as you have seen probably on the map, Australia is the only country where we are not shipping yet. We are in the negotiation with some clinics there, but this uh, not happened yet. So we would need to discuss with the clinics everything, like the method of the vitrification, the procedures they are happy we would follow. Uh, we have shared, we can share the SOPs, the protocols, uh, standard procedures, just in order for them to be sure that they are receiving a good quality biological materials and then you will be happy to go there and receive the treatment further. Excellent. Thank you so much once again for clarifying that. And there's another question okay uh, so we have four frozen embryos in spain if we would like to transport them to your clinic what do we need to do what is the transport procedure who arranges the transport and how much does it cost is your clinic open for patients traveling from poland finally what tests would we need to repeat before the treatment thanks for the questions like let's divide it into the parties like if we are talking about four frozen embryos in Spain we will be happy to transport them to our clinic in order to do this you need to contact uh, our courier department the, the uh, contacts were on the slide if you didn't um, have time to to get them I would like uh, Caroline to just to, to double check it here into the chat so people would have the, the access into this um, uh, I know that we are planning the shipment uh, from Spain 
somewhere, I think, in the first week of June. So if you would be fast, probably we will be able to do also add your materials into that transportation, which is going to happen. Um, in order to plan this, you just need to send your request to our courier department and they will send you the detailed instruction, what is needed, like the documents, the forms being filled, the communication with the clinic. Uh, they will also do the part of this communication and all the arrangements which needs to be done on the way with the customs, um, uh, like borders right now, etc. Uh, is your and they will also provide you with the cost. I cannot say this right now because the conditions are a little bit changed. Like uh, before the the quarantine situation, probably this has not been really much changed. But if I am not mistaken, the transportation cost within Europe were about one thousand four hundred euros or one thousand five hundred, something like this. Is your clinic open for patients traveling from Poland? Yes, our clinic is working already uh, and we are back to the regular conditions of our work. Uh, patients, uh, international patients are not coming to Ukraine yet, but for example, those uh, whose uh, surrogates deliver the babies and we were contacting the consulates in order to let them come into Ukraine, they all came and they are all staying with their babies. So if there is a real need, and the, but we can also support, we can provide the, the documents explaining that there is a need to, to get here into Ukraine for the treatment, this can be done. Uh, and if this, if we are talking about the conditions uh, not in the quarantine, this is absolutely easy and um, uh, patients are happy coming to us uh, as we are very close to Poland. It's about 65 kilometers from the border to Lviv. I mean, uh, finally, what tests would you need to repeat before the treatment? We have a list of tests. Not really much, but these are all tests which are needed according to the Ukrainian legislation. Uh, our coordinators will, will send you that list. But also we would like to see all the previous examinations and the results. And uh, sometimes we are recommending something more like the immunogr immunogram, uh, thyroid tests, uh, maybe some genetics if there were multiple um, miscarriages or multiple negative outcomes in the previous cycle. So this uh, would doctor or myself or somebody from our clinic and the coordinator will work on this together with you. Excellent. Thank you so much for your question and for uh, those recommendations. Definitely interesting and useful. Um, okay, and there's a question actually about, uh, I mean, additional information that uh, yeah. Spanish clinics cannot send members to non-European Union clinics or countries to Ukraine. Is that, this is the feedback they have received. Um, actually, um, European clinics can work with the non-EU clinics under the conditions of the contract or the cooperation conditions if they got, if the clinic in the non-EU has received the authorization for this. And for many of the clinics and for many of the countries, after having the negotiations and providing the uh, quality documentations and showing the controls and answer the questionnaires and receiving their representatives in our clinic, we got the permission working with those clinics and the countries. Uh, also, for some countries which uh, the representatives were not visiting us and we didn't get the direct permission, we are having our partner clinics uh, in the EU. So there could be materials brought to either Poland or to Bratislava, to Slovakia. And then from those clinics under the contracts, having uh, approval of non-EU clinics to cooperate with the EU clinics, we can do the further transportation. And we, we are also communicating this to our patients, of course. All right, excellent. Sounds uh, definitely interesting. And good to know that there are such possibilities as well, of course. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, next question is right here. Can our frozen embryos from egg donation be used for surrogacy? What are the requirements to be accepted as intended parents? 
Yes, the embryos created either from the own oocytes or from the donor material can be used for surrogacy. The requirements are in relation to the genetic um, um, connection. It should be that one of the patients is a genetic father or mother of the baby, meaning if this is an egg donation, so the sperm of the husband should be used uh, in the creation of those embryos, and then that embryo will be we will be able to transfer this to the surrogate. And also, the the very important conditions are that there should be a medical indication to surrogacy in order for us to be able to perform the treatment. Uh, and the medical indications are the absolute one, like the absence of the uterus, like the Rokitansky syndrome or uh, the status after hysterectomy, uh, the big myomas, which are de deformating the cavity, so the, the carrying the pregnancy is not possible, or somatic diseases, where also there is a conclusion of the doctor uh, stating that this patient cannot carry the pregnancy or multiple negative outcomes of the IVF treatments before. So these are the medical conditions and also the couple should be married. Uh, we cannot accept for surrogacy couple who are living together, but they are not officially married. We should have the marriage certificate. All right. Thank you once again for this information um, there is a follow-up question from the very same patient so our frozen embryos are from donor eggs and own sperm the courier company asked us if we are uh, if our embryos are replaceable we were told they can only transport not replaceable biological material so embryos could you explain what does it mean Mm, uh, some countries, uh, they are not allowed to um, ship the biological materials for surrogacy. And this is the specific regulations on the, of the countries. Me, I think that replaceable here, this was that fact that they were wait, asking if you are going to transfer those embryos to yourself. Uh, and if you will tell them that be because surrogacy is not legal in Spain, so they cannot even recommend and they cannot cooperate um, and they cannot support this treatment in any way. So that's why probably they were asking that question. This is not for surrogacy. The patient has just added. Okay, so... Um, you probably need to confirm this and clarify this question with our courier department. I would like you to, to send this by email uh, and we will be happy to probably either I do not understand why this comment was given to you or there is something else what our specialist will be able to, to answer you. Of course. Thank you. As well, I have put the contact detail to to Peter Hura, right, for, so that you can get in touch with him when it comes to the shipping. And mm -hmm. perfect, thank you. Next question is right here. What questions do I need to ask my clinic in uh, Czech Republic so that you have the needed information with regards to my single donor egg embryo? For example, you stated that it would be best for the media material used for the embryo to be compatible with what you use. Also, what about assisted hatching? I believe that my embryo already had assisted hatching, at least the first one that resulted in a successful pregnancy which was done in the Czech Republic, but your package price includes assisted hatching. So regarding the questions which you specifically need to ask your clinic in the Czech Republic, uh, all those questions, they are in the transfer form act. This is the specific form. As soon as you will receive this, you will see and understand what is the information for. And this is mostly for the specialists, for the embryologists on uh, what is the day of the vitrification of the embryos, what were the quality of the embryos before they were vitrified, which media and the carriers are used. This is the most important information. In addition to the fact of the, the analysis um, and the contact person in the clinic, because also there is some paperwork needs to be done by the couriers in order to, to move the materials. Yeah. Regarding the assisted hatching, um, in our clinic, 
we are believers and we did our um, analysis and we have the work done in um, many years and we compared the results of the cryo embryo transfers with the use of the assisted hatching and without and the results of the implantation and clinical pregnancy rate having or for the embryos for whom we performed the, the assisted hatching were higher that's why we decided in 2018, probably already, to use the assisted hatching for all vitrified warmed embryos. I'm not sure that the assisted hatching for your embryos was already done, because usually that procedure is done after sewing and directly before the embryo transfer. Um, maybe it was done for the embryo which already has been transferred, so then this is a good practice. Um, and usually, as I said, the implantation is better after we perform the rupture of the zona pellucida, so the embryo has more potential and it's easy for the blastocyst to, to get out uh, and to be implanted faster. All right, perfect. Once again, thank you so much for that. And actually, there's a follow-up uh, from our previous uh, patient so yeah. we were also told that the embryos should be thought with the same procedure and media will you be able to use the same media in your clinic yes we have access to all the suppliers like we have our um regular practice like for all the patients or local patients we are using one media which is uh, which showed the best results for our conditions in the lab um, and we trust the supplier and we have like uh, a regular uh, supply let's say this is also important for ukraine but we can get any kind of media and we are also using actually for some partner clinics some different medias and these were their requirements so we have uh, regularly i think three or four different medias in the clinic but if we even don't have and we would receive the materials vitrified in the specific media uh, we would get this media and we will warm um, according to the recommended uh, protocol fantastic thank you so much once again and uh, one more question here. When shipping our embers from egg donation, does the destination clinic is informed that the ember is from a donor egg? Yes, you are writing this information in the uh, transcript. And it's, of course, uh, mandatory, I believe. Yes. Perfect. And just to clarify, is the transport via air or land? Uh, right now, via land until the the connections the the airport connects the air flights will not be renewed mm -hmm. okay thank you but it you in the past it was done via uh, air. air yeah it must much faster and uh, easier mm -hmm. thank you and there is another question what current rules might prohibit a transport of a fresh and recently frozen sperm sample on commercial flight from us to czech or ukraine do airlines prohibit carry on of this material um, this can be specific for some uh, air companies airport um, aircraft companies uh, but most of them they are following the rules of the iata and the regulations and there is no um, nothing what can uh, stop this flight to happen. Like if the conditions are uh, confirmed, like we, we have the contact clinic and the person in the US and in the Czech Republic or in Ukraine, and we did all the paperwork, we arranged the time of the visit of the courier, uh, the, um, the container who will be bring either the courier will be bringing or the clinic will give the container, etc. So there is no, no issues on this way, it should, should not be. All right, perfect. Once again, thank you so much for that. Okay, there's another question here. Should we be concerned regarding various rates on some clinics in the Ukraine? There is a lot of negative publicity regarding surrogacy at many IVF and M biotech scam, babies being looked after at a hotel in Kiev. What is your opinion that there might be a chance that surrogacy will be banned in the near future? My worry is if we go ahead then we won't be able to get the baby. 
Um, this is really a very unfortunate situation for all of us here in Ukraine and um, due to the fact that there is a legislation but there is no proper control on that um, how the legislation is used and or followed by some of the clinics and there is no general registry and there is no body gathering the general statistics unfortunately there are some clinics which are making IVF more in the commercial way than in the way of the legality and helping patients uh, and we are for us it's also the like unexpected to hear all this uh, from media but also the media how they are presenting this uh, i would comment only about the hotel in Kiev and those babies being there like if the clinic is uh, busy with the surrogacy and of course like for two months where more than 50 babies delivered they took the responsibility to take care about those babies and for all of those babies were parents who were not able to come to Ukraine but for me it's understandable situation why they were not able to come because like all of our patients like we are not providing so many uh, surrogacy cases and we like number of babies being born in our clinic and for our patients was much less than than these numbers in Kiev but all patients after we contacted like our lawyers contacted the consulates and got the permission for patients to come patients found that the way how to fly to Ukraine some of them flew to Belarus and then came through the border by car. Some of them flew or get, uh, they were Europeans and they came by car. Some of them took even the charter flights and uh, came also to Ukraine after getting the, the permission for landing in Lviv. So there are many, many, many options how to do this. Uh, I think the, the most important is the desire to, to follow um, how this needs to happen. So what I can say in general that I don't know how the legislation will go forward in Ukraine. Myself, personally, I do not believe that it will be banned uh, surrogacy meaning in the near future. Uh, but I think that we need and definitely what potentially would happen that there would be some changes uh, into the law and uh, I would like the changes to happen and more in the way of the controlling this and uh, making sure that everybody works according to the legislative rules. Yes, thank you so much for that question and of course, uh, well, you're advice on that your rec recommendations and so of course let's hope that it will happen as you yeah, said thank you exactly thank you and uh, next question is right here do you have the permission to work with the clinics in spain generally or only with some clinics if our clinic is in spain can be can we be sure that you can cooperate and we will be allowed to ship our embers to your clinic no, you need to contact us directly and we will explain the situation regarding Spain with some clinics. I would uh, answer into your question, but also there is an algorithm how we how we need to act in order to get the materials into Ukraine. Because like definitely we are not doing anything what we call illegal. We just need to understand the, the rules and the conditions in all sides uh, and uh, work uh, and deal according to that. All right, perfect. Thank you so much again for that. Next question is here. My partner has just finished a sperm improving protocol and I was wanting to go abroad to freeze samples for fertilization. And I would go later for the IVF with the quarantine in the UK. My partner is unable to travel. Would it be fine for my partner to go to a clinic in the UK to freeze the sperm, then send it abroad during this time? Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, this will be possible, but you need also to confirm this with the clinic in the UK. But I don't see any issues why this cannot be happening right now. Okay, all right, thank you. And there's another question in regards to the transportation. Is it now safe to transport by land on such long distances? Spain, Ukraine is over 3,000 kilometers and for land transport it was recommended for distances less than 1,500 kilometers before the pandemic. 
uh, right, but we need to be um, ready to the different conditions. And absolutely now, as I said, we would prefer flying. But um, and why this was recommended to 1,500? Because this is something what can be done even if there are two people uh, driving the car, uh, they can change it e each other, and uh, for two three days they will be in the destination. Uh, and uh, because you know the arrangements for the transportation is also requiring requiring the you need to pay for the hotel for the accommodation for the courier you need to to pay daily money for them so it's much uh, commercially uh, effective to fly definitely and also for the materials uh, like they are faster in the destination than they need to be but in in these conditions right now it's better to because there is no other possibility so the only possibility is to go by road and in order to keep the safety for the embryos it's definitely there is no risks because as i mentioned in the presentation the containers and we are even if we are taking one sample or two samples we are using the big containers we decided for this because they are keeping the temperature for two weeks stable and if they are going somewhere into Europe, as I said, to Sweden or to, to Spain, uh, definitely they will be back faster than two weeks. But uh, we are on the safe side, um, being able to control the temperature and being sure that we have enough uh, liquid nitrogen inside. But also there is a possibility to stop in somewhere on the way and to bring more liquid nitrogen into the duars. So it's absolutely safe. It's a bit more complicated for the people doing this, and there is Costa here. He would definitely say that and uh, share my um, feeling. But we need to be prepared to the conditions around, and we would like to do our best for um, helping the patients even under this uh, unexpected and the specific conditions like now of the pandemic. <laughs> Excellent. That sounds really good. I mean, we need to all, uh, let's say, um, well, it's we'll get used to it even, right? So right, that's, yeah. that's good that uh, there are still some ways, possibilities, even though it's a bit di more difficult. <laughs> Thank you so much for clarifying that. There are like three questions left, so we will be slowly finishing. So it is like final call for your questions. Go ahead and type them in if you have any left. And the question is right here, are the borders open for patients coming by car to Ukraine? Uh, after getting the special confirmation from the authorities. If there is really a need, we would be happy to support. Um, and we will send, as we did this for the surrogacy cases, we would send the request. Uh, usually, like, we never got no. And in the situation right now, then the conditions of the quarantine are not really so strict that, as they were even a month ago. So I believe this could happen. But also the borders are uh, probably going to be open after either June 1st or June 15th. This is how the, the government was mentioning this right now. So I think we are talking about really nearest future. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. And if you could just explain this one as well. Please confirm what maximum age of 54 you mean. North America, it means before the 55th birthday, but in European Union countries, it means before 54 birthday. So what does age 54 mean at your clinic? We would do uh, embryo transfer, like we consider 54 until the, the 55th birthday, as you have mentioned here. Okay, so 50, 55, yes, so it's yeah. like 54 and uh, and 12 months, mm -hmm. uh, let's say even if it's less than one day, it's it's still possible. After, fi after you turn 55, no more possible. Yes, like under the conditions of the, the medical concilium, but this should be something like we really need to have a proof about the somatic status of the patient, that there is no chronic illnesses and there is a doctor, local doctor, like the treating physician, uh, stating that she would be able to carry the pregnancy. But we, we don't really like to deal with that and uh, follow the, the ethical committee decision about 54. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that once again. And for now, it seems that this is our last question. Uh, so is only the temperature important or also the movement of the container shaking? Uh, transport, of course. Yeah. If, if there are just the shaking or the small movements, you know, like a big container, firstly, it has two walls. Uh, between the walls, we have the vapors of the liquid nitrogen. If this is on road transportation in the cane of the door, there could be liquid nitrogen fraction. And there is a small, tiny straw located in the cane, and then it's locked with this specific um, material. So it's very, very safely located inside the door. So if the door is moving like this, even a little bit, it's not a risk for the materials themselves because the conditions anyhow inside are absolutely stable. So it's just the temperature. And of course, it's they, it could be thrown, it could be uh, lying on the wall, but it, when the people are going with the container and uh, for those distances, we have always two traveling, meaning one is riding the car and the second is uh, checking the conditions of the container, how it's standing, that everything is fine. Um, so it's absolutely safe. You should not be worried about this process. Excellent. Thank you so much. And yes, some comments are right here as well from other patients that shaking isn't really an issue. So thank you for that as well. And it seems that it is our last question for tonight. So I would already like to thank everyone for your questions for joining us tonight on this Friday evening. And I know it's quite late for Dr. Liana. So Dr. Liana, thank you as well for joining us again and well for answering all the questions. Very interesting uh, webinar, indeed, lots of um, details. In the meantime, there is one more question, so I guess we can still answer that, right? Sure, yes. <laughs> can you recommend carrier companies that are transporting embryos from Spain to Ukraine? Uh, as I mentioned, and Carolina already put the contact somewhere in the chat, I hasn't seen, but uh, uh, we are using our own courier department and we have those people with us for already more than six years. Uh, and these are really professional people knowing what is the most important, all the needs of the Ukrainian side, if we are talking about Ukraine, because uh, if in some countries, like inside Europe and inside US, there is a possibility to transport materials within the cargo shipments, absolutely this is not possible for Ukraine because all this, the transported materials are stopped on the customs and most of them or all of them will, will be X-rayed and they would not check if there is a label not to x-ray or fragile or dangerous or something else. So this is um, conditions of the, and the specific, specificity of the country. That's why uh, I would say that this is important. So please contact our career department and they will be happy to help you. Excellent. Thank you again for that. And yes, I have just sent it to you. Yeah, uh, so you can go ahead and just... Yes, it's courier uh, at firstigbank.com. Excellent. Thank you. And also, let me just remind you that if you would like to get in touch with Dr. Olian and her team, you can also use this link. And once you use it, there is an option to ask your questions. It will be forwarded to the team as well. So go ahead and do it. And uh, again, Dr. Oliana, thank you so much. And uh, as mm -hmm. you can see, there are some thank yous and comments right here. So I just want yeah. you to see. Thank you. Very thorough and informative presentation. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I wish uh, I would like to thank IVF Media. I I am sure they are doing the great job uh, because connecting people, sometimes this is really not easy uh, and being responsible for this and also like uh, understand the processes, but this stronger together and all their uh, initiatives are really great. 
Um, and also, I would like to thank you for staying with uh, me so a long time, asking all those questions. I know they are specific. I know transportation. This is not the the topic which is discussed. Usually, we are talking about different, uh, not interesting, and not so easy acceptable by the patients' um, uh, statistics, results, some special procedures, etc. But this is really important because this is your materials. This is your decision what to do how to proceed, what to select, which which clinic, which country, etc. So I would like to wish you all to become happy mothers soon, to find the way and to make a great decision of with whom to proceed, how to proceed, and finally got it. Um, and we will be in touch uh, definitely soon with either IVF Media or you directly. We will be happy to answer all your questions. And all the best to you. Stay, stay safe. And let's come back to the regular lives. Yes, exactly. Couldn't agree more. So, Dr. Liana, I know it's not our last webinar, so I'm very <laughs> eager to have another one with you. And I would also like to thank everyone. Thank you for those uh, kind words and comments. We are happy that uh, you are coming here over and over again, and we are even more happy that we are able to help you, even if a bit. So, have a lovely weekend, everyone. Have a lovely evening as well. And, uh, well, you know, we will be back here on Monday. So just go ahead and uh, register for our next event on Monday uh, at 6 p.m. UK time, at 8 p.m. UK time. I will be here again as well. And, of course, just remember, this has been recorded. So within the next few days, you will have a chance to watch this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, if you would like to ask anything, you know where to find the link to Dr. Uliana's uh, webinar, this one. So again, Dr. Uliana, have a lovely weekend, have a lovely night and uh, till the next time. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.